New iPhone orders are on track to break previous sales records. Stripe Relay will put your buy buttons within apps like Twitter. Russia says Google is guilty of anti-competition practices and more. It's Monday, September 14th, and this is Crunch Report. Okay, Apple haters, cover your ears, because you're gonna hate this. The company has announced that demand for new iPhones is about to break records again. Apple announced this morning that sales for its iPhone 6S and 6S Plus that were announced last Wednesday, among other things, at Apple's big event, are on track to beat last year's sales for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, which sold their own record number of 10 million units during the first weekend they were on sale. The previous record was 9 million during the launch weekend for the iPhone 5S and 5C in 2013. Both models of the newest iPhone will be available in Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, Singapore, the UK, and the US starting on Friday, September 25th, if you are one of the first pre-orderers that got in early on September 12th. Otherwise, it's a few weeks at best. Apple said specifically that, quote, the online demand for iPhone 6S Plus has been exceptionally strong and exceeded our own forecasts for the pre-order period. We're working to catch up as quickly as we can, and we will have iPhone 6S Plus as well as iPhone 6S units available at Apple retail stores when they open next Friday. Online payment processor Stripe has released a new set of tools called Stripe Relay so that retailers can build more native buying experiences within apps such as Twitter, for example, like a buy button that a merchant can put all over the internet to make sure that the buy-in experience will happen inside a variety of apps without you or I having to launch any external mobile sites or otherwise feel inconvenienced when spending our hard-earned cash. On Twitter, for example, retailers can sell anything inside a tweet through a dashboard where they define products and then get a custom link to then pass along on Twitter with a handy little buy button. All of the information is stored on Stripe, different version of retail products, that sort of thing, that users can flip through. They want us to buy stuff and they want to make it easy. Back in February, Yandex, aka the Google of Russia, filed an antitrust complaint with Russia's watchdog agency, it's called the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service, or FAS, claiming that Google was unfairly benefiting from what comes pre-installed on Android. In other words, Yandex doesn't like that Google gets to be the default search engine on so many smartphones. Now, Yandex has 60% of Russia's search market overall, so well over half, but Android phones account for 86% of all smartphones sold in the country. You can see where it gets to be an issue. And the plot thickened today as Google has now been found guilty of anti-competition practices, which not surprisingly sent Yandex stock sort of through the roof, at least for a while. The FAS will take 10 working days to make its decision in full and send the official order for Google to terminate abuse of dominant position. Google tells TechCrunch of the development, quote, we haven't yet received the ruling. When we do, we will study it and determine our next steps. In a statement, the FAS also notes that while there is a formal investigation underway by the European Commission in relation to these same practices, Russia is the first jurisdiction to have officially recognized these practices as anti-competitive. Michelle Phan is a legitimate YouTube star. If you haven't heard of her, her makeup tutorial videos have been viewed more than one billion times. Wow. And now her makeup subscription delivery service called Ipsy, with a small i, has raised $100 million in a round led by TPG Growth and Sherpa Capital. Users pay the company $10 a month. They get a monthly package of makeup. It's called a glam bag. And it has really caught on. Ipsy has 1.5 million subscribers already, giving the company annual revenue of over $150 $50 million. And Ipsy says it's been profitable for more than three years, which is impressive since the company is just under four years old. And prior to this venture financing round, it had raised less than $3 million. Ipsy currently has 10,000 content creators as part of its Open Studios platform. And it's kind of a popular model. Competitor companies, Birchbox is one, have roughly the same business model, about $10 a month for makeup supplies. People like looking good. Who'd have thunk it? Super Mario Brothers, what does that mean to you? If it means many hours spent playing the Nintendo game every day after school for four years, then you and I have something in common. Did you know, though, that yesterday was Mario Day? If you didn't, yeah, 30 years ago, the Super Mario Brothers shipped on September 13th, 1985. And as it is wont to do, Google's having some fun with an Easter egg in its search results. 
You just Google Super Mario Brothers and you'll get a little toy to play with. It isn't much really, it really isn't much. Just a little piece of your long forgotten youth. But if you click on it 100 times, you get a one-up sound. So it's essentially a really annoying Easter egg for anyone you happen to share an office with. Happy Monday. And that is The Report. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. We love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.